Today, I'm gonna show you why you need to filter your tap water. This is the first part to my complete guide to healthy drinking water. In this series, we're gonna start by exploring what's in your tap water. So if you're ready to improve your health with safe drinking water, this video series is for you. I'm your host, Aida Dragelli, and let's get started. Welcome back, my people. Bienvenidos. So, I just watched a very interesting documentary called The Devil We Know, which opened my eyes to some very toxic chemicals in the water. You know what's scary about toxins in your water? You never know what the effect will be on you. You might hope that you'll develop some superpowers. Mama, I think I'm growing a third eye. But you're more likely to get cancer. That's a tumor, mijita. You need to get that checked. Now at this point, I'm not sure about what other contaminants in my drinking water I need to avoid. I also wonder if there's even a way to diminish my exposure to them. But I'm an engineer, La Ingeniera Jogeli. And as an engineer, I'm always trying to find ways to make things better. I analyze scientific articles and conduct extensive research from reputable sources like the CEH, the NIH, and the EPA which we know are legit because they will make an acronym out of anything. Seriously, when they need to dedicate an entire web page just to acronyms, that's when you start thinking, hmm, they might just be trustworthy. But anyways, by the end of this research, you're gonna know exactly which is the best water to drink for your health. Drinking water is a funny thing. We can't go more than three days without it, and yet, we're making it easier for companies to dump waste into streams. Sounds like we need to get our priorities checked. Those streams then flow in all kinds of directions, from the surface to underground, flowing to the ocean, and then evaporating, and then traveling as clouds all around the world to later fall as rain, and eventually making up the water that flows out of your tap. Since tap is the simplest way for most of us to get our drinking water, I wondered, what's in our tap water? Let's talk about the microbes in your water. When I was growing up, there was one simple treatment we would do to our tap water, and that was... Boiling. We would boil water for at least a minute before drinking it. This is because there could be bacteria and viruses in the tap water. How could that be? Well, I did some digging and it turns out that first fresh water is taken from sources like lakes and streams. Right after, the water passes through treatment plants before starting the long journey to your tap. Along the way, the water is susceptible to all sorts of contamination from the environment and our water pipes. The bacteria and water pipes could be harmful or could be harmless or it could be even good for us. Either way, when you boil water, the extreme temperatures kills all bacteria and viruses in it. Let's talk about the salts, minerals, and pollutants in your water. But have you ever left tap water boiling for too long? If you do, you'll notice that what's left is a shocky, powdery substance. These are all of the solids that were dissolved in the water. Most of it is limescale, which is composed of calcium and magnesium, both of which are minerals necessary for our diets. You can find limescale spots in other places where water has evaporated. For example, on your dishes, toilet bowl, and bathtub. The total ionized solids dissolved in your water is known as TDS. TDS is a concentration measurement. It tells you how many milligrams of dissolved solids there are per liter of water. In the US, if your water has less than 60 milligrams per liter, which is equivalent to 60 ppm, which stands for parts per million, then you've got soft water. If your TDS is more than 121 milligrams per liter, then you've got hard water. I like to think of hard water as the culprit for making things hard to clean. Aha! Leaving behind white spots again, eh? Some scrubbing isn't enough for you, oi! 
Then take this, your worst enemy, cleaning vinegar. So I wondered, do I have soft water or hard water? How to tell whether you have soft water or hard water? A super quick way to figure out whether you have soft water or hard water is using one of these TDS testers. You can find them for under $2 at AliExpress or if you want fast shipping, there's also some at Amazon. I picked one up myself, so how about we test my tap water right now? So the first thing you're gonna do is take the cup off and turn on the meter with the little on off button. And then dip the sensor two inches into your water. Dipping any further would damage the sensor since the electronics in the top isn't sealed. Now we just gotta wait 10 seconds for the sensor to stabilize. And voila, the reading for my water is 98 ppm for its TDS. I'm gonna click hold to hang on to that number while I take out the water. So as you see, it's 98 ppm. Therefore, my water lies somewhere between soft water and hard water. If you have a TDS tester, go ahead and tweet me at Jogeli a photo of your reading and what city you're in. It would be really interesting to know the differences around the country. So, purified water, on the other hand, would have none of these impurities. Ideally, it would be just pure H2O without any contaminants. But here is where it gets very interesting. There are many more chemicals in here besides calcium and magnesium. Some of them are pollutants, substances that cause harm to the environment and that are toxic to your body. Hold on, why are there toxins in our tap water? How is that even allowed? Let's go back to the water treatment plant. There, the local municipality processes fresh water to meet certain standards. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, an agency of the United States federal government sets those standards. The EPA is like the police of the environment. They enforce the law, but they can also make the rules. Environmental Protection Agency, stop what you're doing. Why? Because I said so. At the plant, the treatment process involves adding certain chemicals. They add chlorine to destroy biological toxins and they add fluoride in most of the US to improve dental health. The pH level, that is how acidic or basic the water is, is also adjusted. By the end, the treatment removes certain chemicals completely, which is fantastic. For other pollutants though, the treatment plant only reduces their levels to meet the EPA's acceptable maximum contaminant level, MCL. What that means is that water treatment plants do not completely eliminate contaminants that have no positive function or nutritional benefits for our diets. Instead, the water treatment plants allow those contaminants to persist in controlled quantities in our tap water. Thousands of pollutants in our tap water go unregulated. In the EPA's secondary standards for drinking water, the EPA lists non-mandatory standards for contaminants, which are guidelines that the EPA sets but don't enforce. One of which is the recommended limit of 500 parts per million for the level of TDS in the water. Phew, if you recall, my tap water has 98 parts per million. Luckily, it falls below the maximum recommended contaminant level of 500 parts per million. The scariest part is that there are thousands of chemicals out there flowing in streams of fresh water, many of which are unregulated because the EPA doesn't know enough about their hazards. Report what's in that bottle. Perfluoral octanoic acid, officer. Is that bad? Hmm, beats me. We'll monitor this one. Have a nice day. In other words, the EPA allows unknown chemicals in drinking water until proven harmful rather than banning them until proven safe. Take for example one infamous group of man-made chemicals, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, which are called PFAS for short. These you really need to stay away from. Out of 5,000 PFAS, two have been studied extensively, PFOA and PFOS. 
Both are persistent chemicals, meaning that whenever it enters the environment and your body, it accumulates over time. The worst part is that they never break down. Once in your body, they can have adverse effects on your health. They attack your immune system, your development, and your reproduction, and even lead to cancer. These are the toxic chemicals I learned about in the documentary called The Devil We Know, which I mentioned earlier in the blog. I believe that the purpose of food and drink is to give our bodies the nutritional goodness we need to live. So if it's not an essential nutrient for life, it shouldn't be in our tap water. I don't know what those chemicals will do to me, but I'm not willing to find out. In the meantime, it's like we're all in one big experiment. Before you know it, the last headline on the news will be a study of the effects of really hard to say man-made chemicals on a population of 7.53 billion leads to the mass extinction of the human race. As an engineer, I must say, that's not the way you do science. So, is tap water safe to drink? Many people assume that tap water is the same as healthy drinking water, i.e. water that is actually safe to consume. But what makes tap water safe to drink? According to the EPA, it's water that meets the legal limits for certain contaminants. The EPA sets forth those limits in their drinking water regulations. Well, that's a starting point we can use as a criterion for healthy drinking water. Now we need to compare your tap water to the regulations the contaminants in your drinking water. Fortunately, the USA has the Safe Water Drinking Act, which gives us the right to know what's in our water. Also to know where it's coming from and whether there are water quality problems. You can check your drinking water quality by reading your Consumer Confidence Report, CCR, for your area. For the longest time, I've been wanting to dig into what the contamination in my tap water looks like. And now we're gonna find out together. Okay, here is the CCR website. I had better luck Googling the CCR report for my state than going through the EPA website. Go figure. So once you got your CCR report, compare those values with the EPA's maximum contaminant level, MCL. The EPA lists the MCL under National Primary Drinking Water Regulation. And if you're feeling extra strict about your safety, compare those values with those from the World Health Organization and the European Union. They both got tighter standards. Hmm, that's a lot of work. Sure is. That's why I'm gonna show you an easy way to get a good idea of where your water stands. Are the contaminants in your tap water breaking health guidelines? The Environmental Working Group, EWG, has a sweet database. It tells you exactly how many contaminants you have in your tap water that are breaking health guidelines. The only problem is that the database is outdated, with information only from 2010 to 2015. Let's take a look anyways. For my city, there are nine contaminants above health guidelines, including chlorate, which does harm to the thyroid, chloroform, and oof, many others associated with cancer risk. Holy cow. Plus, my tap water has six other detected contaminants like bromide, which becomes toxic when combined with chlorine. Yikes. Fluoride is in the water, of course, and strontium, which accumulates in the bones and can harm bone health. Ay, ay, ay. All right. We know that tap water has been keeping me alive in the short term, so far. From this information, we can derive that the long-term prospects are not good if I want to live a long and healthy life. And this is not taking into account all those unknown and unregulated chemicals we talked about earlier. The ones that our treatment plants aren't testing in the water. So if you want higher quality water, you need to get your hands on filtered water. A popular option is water in a bottle. But so many brands market bottled water to us. Are any of them worth it in the long run? Find out later in this blog whether bottled water is an efficient way to drink healthier water. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for the latest videos. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Now I'd love to hear from you. How many water contaminants are off the charts in your area? Or what kind of filtering have you been doing to your tap water before drinking it? If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or join the discussion over at the Jogeli Community Forum. 
I'm Aida Jogeli. Thanks for learning with me, and I'll see you next time. That's all, folks. And now a word from our sponsor. We don't have any, but you could be one. If you'd like to help support more frequent, in-depth, researched videos that can help you in your daily life, head over to patreon.com slash and join today. Gracias.